Hello there, folks. Hey, this example is going to be a little bit on scaling. I've done a number of videos on scaling, but this one's going to be a little bit different. And what we're going to do on this one, team, is we've got an application where a customer has a 4 to 20 milliamp sensor, and they are telling me that the sensor will go between 0 to 3,000 PSI over the range of that 4 to 20 milliamp. However, they'd like to enter a uh, number at, say, 12 milliamps, that is not exactly 1500. It might be some adjustable number. Maybe they measure it and they need to do some calibration. So at the halfway point, it's slightly off, if you will. And they want to make that a change. So they're going to have, like, I call this a three part milliamp scaling because you have the value at four milliamps, you have a value at the halfway point, and you have a value at the 20 milliamps. So let's try this out. Let's see if my idea works. I'm going to go over here to data tags. And for us to test, I'm going to create a new tag. And I'm going to call this one raw data. Now, this will actually be the tag that will be mapped to their channel, if you will. But in this case, I'm going to play around with the whole 4 to 20 milliamp number. So I'm going to go here. Instead of treating it as a signed integer, I'm going to make it a floating point. Notice the pi symbol changes. I want you to notice that. And I'm going to go here to the format tab. And I'm going to put down here, I'm going to put in 4.00 for my minimum. And for the maximum, I'm going to put in 20.00 because it's a 4 to 20 milliamp sensor. Now, by default, this is uh, great, but the problem is that our uh, tag driver by default will declare this as five digits before. So I'm going to hit the pick button, click numeric, and click OK. The reason I do this is because it gives me access to the digits before and digits after. And you notice right here, by default, our software sets this up for five. So what that means is that we would only see whole number increments. I wouldn't see any integer values or any, uh, not integer, decimal point values. So I'm going to change this five to a two because the number 20 has one two digits before. And then since I'm doing two digits after, I'm going to change the zero over here to a two. And then just for giggles down here, I'm going to put units, little m, big A for milliamps. All right. So that's going to be our raw tag that's coming in. Now I'm going to create another tag over here on the left. I'm going to create a new tag here. And it's going to come up as tag one. Click the form or the data tab here. All right. So on this guy, let's pretend that we want this one to go from 4 milliamps to 12 milliamps. So I'm going to go treat as here, choose floating point. Okay. And then down here where it says do not scale, I'm going to say, I'm going to scale to integer because the customer has told me they want to go to 0 to 3,000 PSI, and they haven't said anything about decimal points. So I'm going to assume that it's 1 PSI, 2 PSI, 3 PSI. It's going to be whole numbers, so I'm going to go scale to integer. Now, down here in the data from, I'm going to put 4.00, boom. And data 2, I'm going to put 12.00, boom. I say boom because I'm hitting enter. But... Over this range, now normally, I would put in some constant numbers here. <clears throat> but in this case, team, I'm going to call this one data underscore one. It's going to ask me, hey, Bob, you want to declare this? I'm going to say, yes, please do. And then down here, I'm going to do data underscore two. Boom. I hit enter because it wasn't there. I'll declare it. Yes. Okay. So there is my raw numbers coming in there. Um, looks good. Uh, I'm fine with this. Okay. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this tag one, uh, assign it to this raw data. So I'm going to go over here, watch this trick. On the right side, I'm going to grab raw data and drag and drop it right here onto the word internal. Boom, right there. Now that tag turned yellow because it's a formula tag now equal to that. Okay, so listen, I think we've got this set up correct. Now, this covers from 4 to 20 milliamps. Now I need to go from 12 to 20 milliamps. So I'm just going to be lazy here, team. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to copy this tag one. And I'll paste, and I'm going to move it down here. And I'm going to call this one tag two. Oof. Okay, now I want you to notice that this guy uh, is going from 4 to 12, to 12 milliamps. But this one, I really want to change this one to go from 12 we should go 1201. I'm going to go 1201 here to 20 milliamps. Let me change this to 20 milliamps. Okay. But 
instead of this starting at data one, it really needs to start at data two. So I'm going to grab my data two tag and boom, put it right there. And then down here, I want to go to a new one, data three. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to put this in here. It's going to bargain me. Say yes. All right. So there I go. I'm going to change this orientation. I'm going to move this guy up here. Okay. So I think I've got this set up correctly. Tag one is going to go from four to 12. Tag two is going to go from 12 to one. I do wonder if I should change that to 12.00. But anyway, uh, that's a good point. Anyway. We'll see here. So I'm going to go over here to display pages and I'm going to go over to the right side, go to data tags. I'm going to grab all this stuff and drag it out here like this. And I'm going to make it a little bigger. Oops, maybe I won't. I'm going to grab this corner right here. My mouse is a little fidgety today. Come on, mouse. Cooperate. <clears throat> all right. So there we go. All right. Now, if you've ever attended one of my classes, you know that my uh teachings is that if you have a data entry field i always like to put a border on it and so forth so since we're simulating raw data i'm going to double click on this thing or right click and go to properties and on the edge tab i'm going to give it some uh pixel two or three and i'm going to change the color to red because it's a data entry or i'm going to change this so i'm going to do red and then i am going to click on the data tab and instead of the operation being display only, I want to make this a data entry field. And in every class, when I do this, I always try to tell the students, pay attention to this number. If you look right now, it's real small, but it says 0.0, .0 .0 milliamps. The font is black and the background color is white. Watch what happens when I change this to data entry. Boom. Look, so the colors get inverted. When I'm looking at a crimson database for somebody, if I don't see the background colors inverted, that means the, the field's not been turned on for data entry. So I'm going to click the OK button down below because I want to make that data entry. All right, so there you have it. Let me zoom in so you can see this a little more. All right, these three fields here are also going to be data entry. So I'm going to do a cheat team. I'm going to click on this one, hold down my Shift button, click here, click here. So now I've actually highlighted all three of those items. I got all three of them selected. You can see a dot on each one. And I just want to copy all the attributes from this guy over to these three. So let me do it. There you go. Right click, go to copy from, choose copy all formatting. Notice the trailing X. It's asking me who do you want to copy from. I'm going to click on the raw data. Boom. There you go. Okay. So uh, let's add a few more things here to make this understandable. So I'm going to go over here to primitives. I'm going to go into my core primitives, the top core primitives. I'm going to grab a text and I'm going to put a little label here and I'm going to do at zero uh, milliamp. Okay. And then I'm going to copy this guy, copy, paste. And I'll move the next one down. Put it right here. This one is going to be at 12 milliamps. There we go. And we're going to control V paste again. And we'll move the bottom one down here. Ah, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to resize. I'm going to grab the dot in the middle like this. And we'll place this guy here. And this one is going to be the value at 20 milliamps. So we'll put a 20 milliamps in here like this. All right, now I'm uh, somewhat weird. I like to line things up. So I'm going to go align, the center of this dude, boom. Uh, not that way. Align with uh, middle of. We'll do middle of. Right there, there we go. And then we'll do the same with this one, align with middle of, boom. And we'll do the same align with middle of this guy. Okay, now, uh, I don't think they're, they almost look like they're lined up. We'll do one more here, align with the left of this guy. All right, there we go. Okay, so let me save this. Let's download this and let's see what happens. Let's try this, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and download. Got an HMI right here. It's already running. We're going to click Remote View. Okay, so we can see right now that uh, we got zero milliamps going in. Everything's zero. So the customers told me that at zero, at four milliamps. Oh, I should have changed that number to four. Hold on. This, I'm going to go back. This is supposed to be four milliamps. Team, you guys got to jump in and tell me. Oh, this is supposed to be four milliamps, not zero milliamps. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Let me re-download this. I 
my coffee has not kicked in yet this morning. Oops. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay, so so at four milliamps, they're saying is zero. At 12 milliamps, maybe the PSI is 1500. And at 20 milliamps, it's supposed to be 3000. Okay, so I got my numbers. I made those in there. There we go. Okay, so if I and notice right now this data to and from is negative, that's because this number is supposed to go from four to 20 milliamps, but by default, it starts at zero. So let's click and put in a four milliamps. All right. So now we can see that tag one has that, tag two is this. Let's change this number to 8.55, for instance. So now you can see tag two is this, tag three is off. But in reality, uh, we're not really paying attention to tag two right now. We should be focused on tag one because it goes from four to 20 or four to 12 milliamps. So if I change this number to 11.67, for instance, there's my number. Once I roll over, to uh, whoops, 12 something, now this number becomes important. And if I was playing with this, let's say that this number was 1400, not 1500, you can see the scaling would change accordingly. Now, the next part of this is I only want to show the operator one of these values. I want to show this one whenever the value is between four or below 12 milliamps. And this one when it's above 12 milliamps. So I'm going to go back to Crimson. And I'm going to double click on this tag one. And I'm going to go to the show tab. And I'm going to say, you know what? I only want to see this when my raw data is 12 milliamps or less, for instance. So I'm going to click the edit button here. which should bring up this little pop-up. There it is. And I'm going to drag raw data right here. And I'll do a space. And I'll do less than equal sign space and i'm going to put 12.00 like that enter so only if this equation is true will it show that so i'll click ok then i'm going to double click on the other one and i only want to show this one when it's above 12 milliamps so i'm going to go to the show tab hit the edit button here and i'll drag the same raw data right into here space greater than space and I'll do 12.01. I'm going to do 12.01 because that was 12 milliamps. All right, so I'll do that. Click OK. Now, before I move on, every time I go to download to this right now, these data tabs are going to go back to zero because these data tags, because I do not have them set up as retentive. So I'm going to go to the right side, and these three tags, I want to set them as, up as retentive so that the HMI retains those values. So I'm going to go ahead and set these up as retentive. Boom. All three of them. There we go. If I save it. By the way, this is one of those important factors where if you click on the option for new database identifier, I have a video on that, that'll wipe these out. So you don't want to do that, folks. Remember, when you click on new database identifier, if I save this as a different name, always, I always teach click no. All right, let's go ahead and download this, see what happens. All right. All right. So we've downloaded the unit and let's go ahead and play with our numbers again. So once again, I'm going to put in uh, zero. I'll leave this line right here. I'll change this to 1500. And I'll change this one to 3000 PSI. What the guy wants. Okay. So once again, notice tag one is only being displayed. Tag two is not shown because this number is clearly below 12 milliamps. So this will be shown anytime it's below 12 milliamps. This number will be shown anytime it's above 12.01. So let's go ahead and put in 4 milliamps here. Okay. And you can see the value is 0. We change this to 8.69 or something. You can see it follows 10 milliamps and so forth. Looks great. Everything's working great. If I go to 12.35, now notice the other number shows up here. And that's correct. And that's following exactly linear scaling now. So if I was to change this number, instead of it being 14 or 15,000 PSI, maybe our calibration showed it to be 1235, 1,235 PSI. So now that number changes correctly. Now, what if I do this? Take it a little below. There's the scaling. 
And it's ironic that that number is the same about that. Uh, okay, so there we go. So that works out pretty good. And that's what I call a three-part scaling. So I've broken up the uh, tag. I've taken the raw data tag over here, created another one. And I have broken it up into two different scalings between 4 to, 20, 4 to 12 milliamps and then 12 to 20 milliamps. And I'm using the data display from, display from and two fields to be three different tag numbers. And I think that's pretty cool, really. Anyway, that's just a quick video on my idea of doing a three-part milliamp scaling. If you do more parts than that, uh, you start to get into uh, tank strapping applications. And that's a whole other story. I think I have a YouTube video on tank strapping where you have a horizontal tank. Uh, yeah, this this thing here, I understand. But when you get into tanks, just deviate real quick here. Hey, where's my tanks? Here we go. So, of course, these are all vertical tanks. They work great. They're easy. They're linear as the measurement. But the end of these spears are not linear. And then uh, if you ever go with a horizontal tank, uh, that's a whole other story for uh, doing. If you're taking a measurement of this thing across this height, it's not linear. And that becomes a tank uh, strapping table application. Anyway, team, uh, that's my example. If you want to copy this database, don't be afraid to send me an email and refer to the three-part milliamp scaling. And I'll send you a copy of the database. Hey, thanks a lot. Have a great day. See you later.